We are Dan and Bonnie Blackledge. Uh, our business is called B&B Farms, which is both a canola farm and a canola oil business. We um, applied for the SARE grant um, back in 2011 because we wanted to see if there was a more effective way of, um, of running our farm than just selling our canola seed as a commodity to, um, to one of the big processors over in Canada. This year we've got about 105 acres of canola growing. It'll, it's planted in April normally and um, harvested in August. So what you see in the background here is about a, a week to two weeks from harvest. It's probably at about 20% moisture now. We want to get it down to about 10% moisture. We are um, uh, in the middle of transitioning from um, uh, what I would call a traditional way of growing canola, which is um, using a disc and a plow and a harrow and so on to repair the fields, um, to moving towards uh, no-till um, cropping of canola. Um, last, uh, or this year actually, we, for the first time this spring, for the first time, we um, rented a no-till drill and drilled 40 acres of, of our canola with that, just as an experiment to see how it would work. Working with MSU, um, the County Extension Director um, here, Jerry Lindquist, and um, right now we are in the process of getting some of our we do, we do a wheat canola rotation. Right now we're in the process of um, taking one of our 20-acre wheat fields and um, preparing that for a cover crop. So that will be our first cover crop moving towards the no-till system. We're going to try 20 acres this year um, and see how it goes and we'll no-till canola into that no-till, into that cover crop and wheat stubble. Um, so uh, I, I think that's a, a big move towards um, creating a sustainable type of farming here. We started out with the SAR grant um, using a incubator kitchen in Hart, and we were producing a small amount at a time, and uh, we have now progressed to having our own licensed kitchen in our farmhouse, which makes it a lot easier and more efficient to uh, produce larger quantities. Part of uh, the SAR grant was to uh, ask for cost to get our business started and we had hoped originally to have someone else press the oil and we would just do the bottling and marketing well it ended up that we couldn't find anybody else to market the, or to uh, press the oil so we ended up having to buy an oil press and this uh, this SARE grant actually helped us to pay for part of that oil press so that was really um, a great thing to have. I think the first big thing that helped with the marketing was um, we ended up going to, a, I think it was called Making It in Michigan conference that was put on by MSU and the Product Center. And we, we, we uh, had a booth there. We got to make a lot of contacts. That's how all of our first sales were made. And it just seems like it's a type of product that once somebody has it and is using it, somebody else hears about it, and everything just keeps moving and we keep getting more contacts, more sales. A lot of them have been through the incubator kitchen in Hart. A lot of them have been through our relationship with MSU and the product center. Um, and a lot of them, um, you know, just word of mouth. Um, but we, we've made a few active um, attempts to market it with certain businesses. But uh, like I said, most of it just seems to kind of happen. Uh, the, the, the canola crop and, and what we're doing with the uh, oil business right now um, is really attributable in large part to both the SARE grant and the MSU. Without the help and encouragement from both and technical expertise, um, I'm fairly certain we wouldn't be growing canola today. We'd probably be growing corn and soybeans in a traditional way. So um, it, it's, it's been great to have that kind of support and somebody to turn to with all the questions we have, and there's millions of, it seems like. Mm -hmm.